This use of play is brought to you by. This is how we roll. Oh, the offers are quite exciting, and the prices will leave you smiling. Everybody's got a chance to glow. Enjoy one month of free Flow TV when you sign up or upgrade to Flow Broadband this season. It's Wednesday, December the 23rd, 2015, and this is your Barbados Today Morning News Update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. In our top story this morning, in Battle Christ Church West, MP Dr. Maria Ergard will be heading to the High Court this morning to support the lawsuit she brought against the opposition Barbados Liberal Party for expelling her from the party. However, attorney for the party, Roger Ford QC, told Barbados Today last night that the matter would most likely be adjourned. Ford said, apart from not fully reading the documents served on his clients, party leader Mia Motley and general secretary Dr. Jerome Walcott, only on Saturday, he still has to prepare affidavits in response. Ford agreed with sources close to Agar's legal team that an adjournment was understandable in the circumstances. Agar will be asking the court for an undisclosed sum in damages as well as to make other declarations that include nullifying the decision to expel her. Minister of Commerce, Industry, Donville Ennis, is not happy about the excessive spending and the high level of commerce associated with Christmas holidays. Ennis said he is concerned that with Christmas only a few days away, Barbadians are putting way too much emphasis on the commercial aspect of the season and too little focus on the family. It's that it's still too much about commerce. I'm a sound strange kind of amazed by this uh, commerce. But I still feel that Barbadians have an opportunity to really focus on the family and on Christ at Christmas time. I think we've really become very, very uh, um, commercial, not just in thinking, but in the way we conduct ourselves. A check with financial institutions revealed that the demand for loans remained high, but while the banking institutions are willing to lend, officials said they remain vigilant in order to avoid rising delinquency in the new year. General Manager of the Barbados Workers' Union Cooperative Credit Union, uh, Corinne Clark, told Barbados today there has been a 20% increase in demand for loans, with the majority of members requesting $10,000 or less. Yeah, we see quite a high demand from our members. What we are doing, though, not because the demand is high that we've been granting or approving the loans. We've been quite stringent and prudent with our approval. So that next year we don't face with high delinquencies. So we we are we have seen an increase or more to, like, let's say, maybe 20% increase in the demand, but not necessarily um, personal. Backlog of cases currently being experienced by the island's judicial system could soon be a thing of the past. According to Magistrate Douglas Frederick, while there was still a worrisome backlog, these cases were being dealt with speedily. The experienced court official praised the work of the Royal Barbados Police Force, saying it was their improved efforts which were now leading to cases being dealt with in a timelier manner. He said the mediation which Chief Justice Sir Marston Gibson introduced has also been helping with protection orders. Helping the cause was the fact that he had seen a significant reduction in the number of new cases for the month of December, in addition to a decrease in shoplifting matters. Health authorities are reporting 65 confirmed cases of the H1N1 virus or swine flu up to two Saturdays ago. However, they say there have been no positive cases since November 21st. In light of a fourth suspected flu death in neighboring Trinidad and Tobago, the Ministry of Health here is assuring Barbadians that all necessary measures are being taken to protect the health of the public. Meanwhile, as panic spread in Trinidad following the suspected victim of the virus, 
the health ministry there is saying that swine flu may not be what caused the death of the woman. We pick up the story in this TV6 News report. With 29 confirmed cases of swine flu and three deaths related to the disease throughout Trinidad and Tobago, panic ensued when Stacey Ramkisun died on Saturday as symptoms relating to her death coincided with that of the H1N1 virus. However, the Ministry of Health says they're waiting on a final report of the autopsy that was performed on Ms. Ramkisun's body today. Expressing condolences to the Ramkisun family, the Ministry reminded the public that the influenza can cause severe illness in people, including the elderly, infants, young young children and pregnant women, as well as those with chronic medical conditions such as heart, lung, kidney disease and diabetes. Frontline health workers are also especially at risk for contracting the flu virus. The virus is generally spread when an infected person coughs or sneezes and droplets containing viruses get into the air and are inhaled by persons nearby. There's regional and international news after this short break. Towards days before Christmas, I had so much to do. Shopping, more shopping, and I was feeling blue. There's a mother, a father, a wifey, and friend. Lots of things to buy, but there was no money to spend. Ah, I found the answer. The BT shopping spree. 15,000 in goodies, free, free, free. It's easy to enter, nothing hard to do. Follow my instructions and a winner can be you. Visit facebook.com backslash Barbados today. Do it quickly and fill out your form to enter this spree. Look, I'm shopping at the Cost You Less Mega Store. Come down, fill your trolleys with goodies and more. And like me, you two can say, ho, ho, ho. Welcome back with news from the region now. Antigua and Barbuda now further open to the European market with the arrival of Alitalia from Milan and Italy. The prestigious airline which has flown a lot of famous people, including most recently Pope Francis, is the fifth inaugural flight to land at the VC Bird International Airport in four months. The inaugural visit was laced with the usual pomp and splendor and ended with a high-end gathering at the Ocean Point Resort and Spa. Among the invited guests were Governor General Sir Rodney Williams, members of the Diplomatic Corps, government ministers and tourism representatives from both Antigua and Barbuda and Italy. Chief Executive Officer of the Antigua and Barbuda Tourism Authority, Colin James, extended a special welcome to the crew and expressed the hope that the relationship will be a long and fruitful one. We welcome you with open arms to Antigua and Barbuda. Tourism Minister Asset Michael describes the new arrival as a monumental achievement, adding that this brand new network will reap a number of economic and social benefits for the country. In St. Lucia, the seemingly never-ending clash between hotel management and the public over access to that country's beaches has drawn the attention of billionaire investor and chairman of Sandals Resorts, Gordon Butch Stewart. Sandals owns three properties in St. Lucia. I regard every beach as, as public. Right. It also doesn't mean that because it's public, people can behave in a manner for both local citizens or foreigners in a, in a what is a disgraceful manner. Um, I think tourism and the local communities coexist, coexist beautifully. And I think with pass, the more time that passes, is the more local communities and the visitors appreciate each other. On the international scene, as many as 3,200 convicted offenders were mistakenly released too early from Washington State prisons because of errors in calculating good time credit. The mistakes occurred over 13 years and began after a state Supreme Court ruling ordered the Department of Corrections to apply good time credits earned in, country, in county jails 
to state sentences. Correction officials are now trying to locate the ex-offenders who were released too early, and state authorities will ensure the ex-offenders fulfill their sentences as required by law. And on that note, we end our Barbados Today morning news update. However, you can join us again this afternoon. Until then, remember to log on to www.barbadostoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also, tune in to Channel 101 on Flow TV and to Mix 96.9 FM to get all the latest news and sports. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.